Hello friends, welcome back. I'm Ramon, how are you today? In today's video, we're going to be doing a review for the First Aid Beauty Weightless Liquid Mineral Sunscreen with Zinc Oxide SPF 30. This has been like a really hot recommendation. People have been dropping this in my comment section for a minute now, and I figured why not try it? First Aid Beauty is a brand I personally really like a lot. When I worked at Sephora, it was one of those brands that was very universally usable for clients. The big thing about the brand is that a lot of the stuff is very, very gentle, very, very nourishing for skin and skin barrier. It's intended for people who have very, very compromised skin, such as like, psoriasis and eczema and that kind of stuff. I've used a good amount of their products prior to this. They have their coconut water primer, their first aid beauty exfoliation pads, their cleanser, and their moisturizer. I've used a few of those things before. And so this is a brand I know really well. This is a brand I actually really generally like. So we're gonna test the sunscreen from them. Before we get into it, I'm gonna ask that you hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. If you like these sunscreen reviews, hit that thumbs up. These have been doing really, really well on my channel. And so along with that, if you have a sunscreen that you would like me to try out that you haven't really seen a lot of reviews for, if you want to know if they are brown skin friendly, leave those in the comments down below. That's the whole point of the series is I'm really trying to test these mineral filter sunscreens to see if their claims of working for universal or diverse skin tones is T to make sure that tan, dark, and deep skin individuals can find sunscreens that work for them that fit their criteria of sunscreens. So the First Aid Beauty Weightless Liquid Mineral Sunscreen with Zinc Oxide. This is a mineral only filter with only zinc oxide, non-nano. It is an SPF 30 broad spectrum, which always don't look for broad spectrum when it comes to US sunscreens. We don't really denote UVA protection specifically so that broad spectrum just designates that it does cover UVA. Oil-free, non-homogenic, safe for sensitive skin. It's for sweet beauty. It's a 16.8% zinc oxide formula. It's fragrance-free, so ideally it's going to be good for most, if not all, skin types, considering sensitive skin specifically. The online claims. It's non-whitening. This is tinted, I believe, so we're going to be testing that. Mineral SPF protects skin from UVA, UVB rays, broad spectrum, and absorbs quickly with a light, invisible, non-greasy finish. Wear alone or under makeup. So they're claiming this wears really great with makeup. Or they're claiming that it's not greasy and super lightweight, which is something that I've been having an issue finding with American sunscreens. It's also packed with antioxidants that defend against environmental aggressors and pollution. We'll get to that in a second. And they do claim that the sheer tint blends into all skin tones. So we are going to be testing that. It's best for all skin types according to their website, specifically saying it's a solution for dryness, pores, redness, and oiliness. And those are things that from time to time I generally battle, whether it's a little bit of redness because of irritation or overuse of high strength actives. I'm an oily skin individual. I don't have pore issues, but sometimes I have dry patches on my skin and that's what some of these physical sunscreens tend to cling to and give me more texture. So we'll see. The sunscreen also features Alteramonas, Ferment, Alteramona, uh, Ferment Filtrate, and it looks like it's a botanical extract that just kind of soothes the skin. It says, protects the skin against exposure to the elements and helps regenerate, soothe, and retain moisture in skin. Vitamin E, antioxidant, and then the First Aid Beauty Antioxidant Booster, which looks like it's licorice root extract, which I love. It's a great brightener. Feverfew and white tea. Don't necessarily have familiarity with those two, but I know like green tea is really rich antioxidant, so I'm gonna assume white tea is in that same family as well. So yeah, let's get into it. I'm gonna be doing a four day wear test where I'm gonna be varying the amount of skincare underneath and the amount of makeup on top just to see how the sunscreen plays with all those things. Again, this says it's gonna work well with makeup, so we're gonna test that out because I am now working again. Gotta wear my mask. I usually have eight to 12 hour days, so we're really gonna be putting this to the test with makeup. I'm gonna be testing this along with my four Bs, beard, beading, beat, and brown skin friendly to see does this play well with facial hair? Does it play well with other skincare? Does it play well with makeup on top of it? And how does it affect the makeup wear? And then at the end of it, is it gonna work for brown skin as they do claim? We'll find out. And the notes for each application, I will be actually measuring out a full quarter teaspoon to apply to my face. And depending on the opacity and discoloration of the sunscreen, I will carry that down to my neck and my ears from day to day. And then I also do let it set for five minutes before going on top with makeup. Oh yeah, uh, stick around. The next time you see me is gonna be at the end of day four and I'll do a full wrap up on this first day beauty mineral sunscreen. <laughs> Non-greasy finish. Blends into all skin tones. Not greasy and super light weight. Ew! You're so oily! Y'all got me on Beyonce's internet looking like this. I just want to say that right now. So we're here at the end of day four. After reapplication, we're gonna be discussing my thoughts after four days of wear test of me testing out the First Aid Beauty Weightless Liquid Mineral Sunscreen with Zinc Oxide. We've gone through four different days of wear tests, changing up the variables of skincare and makeup, and I'm gonna tell you what I thought about it. Before I get into that, I'm gonna explain day by day what I did over the last four days in terms of skincare and makeup to tell you how I tested the sunscreen itself. So. 
Day one was my light skincare, light makeup day. For those days, I just do a couple layers of an essence and a toner, and then use the sunscreen as a moisturizer in itself to lock in that hydration. Note, for all four days, I did measure out a quarter teaspoon, using that on my face and my ears and my neck as I felt was right for each situation. I also waited five minutes after application before going in with makeup on top, just to make sure the sunscreen had time to set before going in with makeup so that it didn't get messed up necessarily. So that first day was my first initial application of the product. When you're using this, it, it's distinctly tells you shake well before using. So I usually shake this between 15 to 30 seconds just to make sure the mineral filters, because this is a mineral sunscreen, those filters are suspended in the solution. You just wanna make sure that it's evenly mixed and well dispersed. I measured out that quarter teaspoon, applied it to my face. And the first thing I thought was, oh my God, this is like a really decent tone for the most part. And it blended in color-wise kind of well. When I first thought was this is kind of lightweight, but it kind of feels like low-key kind of silicone-y, like when you're putting on a, like a lightweight foundation, it kind of reminds me of like the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea kind of situation. Makeup Forever used to have this like watery foundation. I get that kind of vibe from it, but I was like, I mean, overall, like it feels okay. Got it all over my face. And then I waited five minutes for it to set. It never set. Foundation was a little bit weird because I had the texture of the sunscreen and because that didn't set, it affected everything else that I put on top of it. So the foundation, which the first day was matchsticks, it never set down. Things kind of moved. I was afraid to buff on top of it because like it essentially, I would buff and it would like move whatever was underneath it. It really shortened the length of my makeup wear and it got really creasy really fast. And then I had like texture where my friend was like, looks like you put on setting spray and then the makeup just started breaking up on your forehead. <laughs> I was like, okay. And you can see at the end of the day, granted for this whole wear test, I'm back at work. So I have the unfortunate variable of I'm wearing a mask. I am at work for eight hours a day. My wear test, because I have to start the wear test before work and have to do it after I get home from work, oftentimes I'm doing eight to 10 to 12 hour wear tests for the sunscreen. That being said, because the sunscreen itself is a tint, which I'll get to in a bit, I feel like it kind of amplified a lot of coverage. So I feel like I didn't have to go in with as much product because the sunscreen in itself provides enough of a tint in its own to kind of balance out some discoloration and provide a little bit of its own like presence on your skin with opacity. Day two, I went in, same thing. This time I put it on my ears as well, just to kind of see what that would feel like and look like. This this was a full skincare day, so I did a lot more hydrating layers, but I also did creams and serums and moisturizer underneath the sunscreen, just to kind of see if the sunscreen would pair well with them. For the most part, there was no pilling in that regard of the two interacting with each other, but yeah, it was greasy. The, just did not set again after five minutes. It was still just like this layer of sunscreen sitting on top of my skin. It was so bad, I was like, I need a blot just to see if that's gonna affect anything. And you can see in the footage, I take some toilet paper, I blotted and just the amount of shine and translucency that came on that paper. This is an episode from The Simpsons where they were like talking about fast food because how much trying to gain weight. And Bart like rubs a hamburger on the wall and it made the wall translucent. That's what I felt like when I blotted. Even still with the application, because of how it sits and how it's so thick kind of on a like in the surface layer I feel like no matter how much I'd rub it in I couldn't get a layer that was free of like fingerprints smudges swipe marks like it was it didn't settle down into like a uniform layer which concerned me in terms of like how much coverage I'd be able to get out of this and I, it's not something I feel like I can do multiple layers of because it's not like a layer sets down for me to do another layer on top of it it stays this weird really emollient layer with makeup on top of it it wore a little bit better just in that it wasn't so greasy but there's so much luminosity that comes into the makeup and that second day was simple makeup again i did just concealer buffed out and i don't usually have an issue with that concealer being so radiant but it was radiant and it was creasy it really was creasy eyelids and my under eyes and my forehead marks creasy also you'll see throughout the days that i do the end of the day footage there's just a lot of times where like it gets really weird and breaks up right here which is my more oily areas and the foundation just starts looking really splotchy really weird clicking really weird spots day three i did simple simple skincare again so a couple hydrators this on top and that was a full full makeup beat that was all matte all long wear all like full coverage this time because i wasn't working and i wasn't worried about getting stuff on my clothes i put some on my neck and it wore it wears decently on the neck and the ears in terms of like the feeling of it it's not greasy and whatnot as much as it is on my face but this day i didn't decide to block my boyfriend when he tried it out he was like i set the sunscreen and that seemed to do a little bit of good so i set my sunscreen went in with the primer the primer moved it like reactivated the formula that i mean it technically wasn't even set in the first place but it moved things even though it was set put foundation on top there was weird texture things i even primed my eyelids still creased and this i use the fenty soft matte pro filter foundation which is a matte foundation generally i've been using the hydrating foundation because i find that works really well for my skin now but i set the sunscreen i primed with a mattifying primer used a mattifying foundation set my face with powder before i buffed in any powders used a mattifying setting spray and reset that and somehow it was still radiant and dewy which is i mean a beautiful look when it's like in the first 30 minutes of it but 
within the first few hours it just did that thing where like it's creasy it looks heavy it's really exaggerating like texture in my like fine lines and like expression marks it's breaking up in certain areas because what's underneath it isn't setting down and it's moving things and like again granted i had a mask on but it's one thing when it's kind of leaving some lines it's another thing when the product in itself is just coming off completely it doesn't allow the foundation to set itself and fancy in itself is kind of transfer proof for the most part and i haven't had the same issue with other sunscreens and i've had to wear masks with other sunscreens still and then today's day four today i just did simple skincare with the sunscreen on top of it just so you can see how the sunscreen looks on bare skin and i reapplied and here we are at the reapplication you know when jenna marbles did her 100 layers of foundation thing or you know when people are trying to tell you like, oh, you need a quarter teaspoon of sunscreen. This is what it would look like if you put on that much of like an SPF BB cream. I look greasy and cakey and nasty. I don't know if you can see with the detail of the camera. There's just a layer of sunscreen on top of my face that's literally just like suspended. And I try to go and like, my face is itchy right here. If I go and do this, let me get a clean napkin for you. Just to kind of emphasize. Like I'm itchy right here. I don't scratch my face. I usually just pat. You can see it took off the shine and the sunscreen. Every day after I've gone to put this on, I wipe off my fingers because there's just this much sunscreen on my fingers. So note, this basically, I'm going to classify this as a very, 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 very sheer tinted, like honestly foundation that just so happens to have high potency SPF abilities to it. It offers you a little bit of even coloring, reducing some redness and whatnot, but this is essentially like just a very radiant sheer foundation that has sunscreen benefits to it, in my opinion. It shortened the wear time. It was really, really creasy. It didn't set down, so whatever you put on top of it just settled and creased into whatever things, like lines or texture, just because the sunscreen wasn't allowing it to set down. And even with using powder, it just didn't work. And one thing that I really hated about this was going in, whether I blotted and then used powder on top of it, or like right now, if I were to go in with powder. I don't know if this ever happened to you, but like when your face is really greasy or like slippy and you go in with a brush and go back and forth between your face and powder the powder gets cakey or even like it happened to my bronzer i don't know if you can tell but like the grease kind of caused the bronzer to like oxidize and harden a little bit and then going back to like the let's go back and talk about the claims first of all because that's where i'm just like <sighs> non-white being it's tinted and you can see it's not white there's no white cast to this there's just whatever this tan cast is which happens to be somewhat close to my skin tone and it works for me but having done research looked into it simply ej she did a review of this too and going back to this being a very sheer foundation this just added a cast to her skin that wasn't white but it was whatever this was so she looked ashy and even on fair complexions this wouldn't look good because this is essentially a sheer foundation so you're gonna look orange so this works if you're my skin tone and even still it's not the right undertone so it doesn't even work for me that well like Absorbs quick, absorbs quickly with a light, invisible, non-greasy finish. Wear alone or under makeup. I'm using the right sunscreen. Like the pictures right there. This is the same thing. So I don't. It won't clog pores. It's not comedogenic. Which I mean, I haven't had any adverse reactions from this thus far. Even four days into this, I'm not breaking out. I don't notice any whiteheads or anything. But it's just so greasy that it feels like it's way too occlusive. So I would worry. Antioxidants and whatnot. It has great antioxidants. I looked into them. You know, it has the white tea, which much like green tea is a great antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial ingredient that aids in kind of like protecting your skin from free radical damage. Vitamin E, which works in in conjunction with the zinc oxide to kind of give you a really nice CVB protecting boost. And then it has the Ultra Ramonas Ferment Filtrate, which basically is just another humectant. So here's the tea. It works best for dry, oily, combination normal skin. I have oily, acne prone skin. And solutions, it's a great solution for dryness, pores, redness, and oiliness. I won't let you decide on that one. Four Bs, beard, it collects in my beard. And the only pro of it is that since it's not a mineral, since it's not like the standard physical sunscreen that has that whiteness to it and so tinted, it doesn't show as severely or as blue, but it's still in my beard. Beading, it doesn't necessarily peel, but it just collects and moves and kind of like congeals in some capacity. And like right now it's just like, it's hovering. It's like literally suspended on my skin. I know physical sunscreens kind of work by sitting on top of the skin, acting as a barrier in that way to both convert UV light and reflect a small amount of UV light. But this is literally just like suspended on my skin. If I were to go like this, you would... Y'all see that? Beat. No, it doesn't sit underneath the makeup. It just, makeup sits right on top of it. 
it allows things to crease a lot more easily. Nothing sets down to a matte finish and it like shortens the wear of things. And also just the way it breaks up is just not cute and brown skin friendly, no. Check out Simply EJ's channel where she did the review of this. This isn't even white skin friendly. You would look orange. I hate this. I hated this from day one. I really hate this. I'm, I ain't gonna sugarcoat it. And it's a shame. I saw this on a really good friend of mine, Angie, AKA Gigi's Beauty here on YouTube. And it looked beautiful on her skin. And she's literally about my same shade and foundations and whatnot. So I was like, oh, it looks amazing on her. And she loves this. We're very different skin types. And she looks for different things in her skincare. She's more dry skin, but she loves a radiant look. And I know she uses other SPFs as well. So this would wear, work really well in conjunction with other SPFs. Like she wears it. I use this in these examples as my sole SPF full quantity where I needed to. Real talk, again, as I mentioned, this would work great for someone who has really dry skin, who happens to be my skin tone, who wants to look radiant. This I would only ever consider using if I have to again. If someone forced me to, my life depended on it, as a topper for another mineral sunscreen that leaves me with a heavy cast and might be way too matte. For example, the Australian gold sunscreen I used, this would work really beautifully as a sheer layer on top of it to balance out that white cast and add some more radiance where that one is really mattifying. Or even over the Claire's Midday Blue UV Shield. And this is top that off, I'm gonna reveal. This is 44 mil. 1.5 fluid ounces and this was $34. Using it for four days, I feel like I've already gone through this much. And this is it on the face. I put it on my ears, I put it on my neck. The reason I'm reluctant to put it on my neck and why I only did it for one day and why I regret doing it is again, this is literally a sheer foundation. It rubs off on anything you put on. I now have a shirt and a towel that are stained with the sunscreen because of the pigmentation from this. This is not in the same vein that Versed was, that Versed sunscreen that we don't speak about in that it was tinted, but that tint just kind of aided in getting into the skin and didn't really like have any opacity to it. This has opacity to it in the form of like, it's kind of like low-key a foundation. If they expanded this shade range, I'm not gonna lie, this would actually be fire, especially for darker skins, if they had a few different shades of this. I know they have another BB cream that did have some more shades, but this would only work for like my skin tone if you actually were the right amount of this. And you can't tell me they can't make deeper shades of this. Morphe can come out with a 64 pan of brown shades, of brown shadows. We're able to implement that pigmentation into things like this as vehicles for sunscreens to make sunscreens a lot more appropriate and wearable for darker skin tones. I hate this. It's not Ramon approved, so no. I'm as angry as I was the Biasance, but no, this isn't it. Um, sorry, but um, yeah, if you like the sunscreen review, <laughs> um, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more sunscreen related content and hit the notification bell so that you know when I post more of these videos, which hopefully will not go as badly as this. In the comments down below, have you tried this do you like it was this just like a one-off situation for me having tested it over four different days in various conditions and having a very consistent result you tell me yeah and first day beauty if you're watching this look at me baby bye guys <laughs>